What's going on everybody, Brandon here from Gearist, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Terex Agravix Speed from Adidas. Contrary to the fact that the shoes from Adidas or Adidas that we have looked at over the past couple years have all had a little bit of boost foam in them, not every running shoe from Adidas has to have boost in it. If you're not familiar with what Adidas boost foam is, it is this bubbly looking stuff right here, which is a form of TPU foam. Super bouncy, super responsive, a little bit heavy, but we really like it. Today, however, in Looking at the Terex Agravix Speed, this shoe right here, we're looking at something that is a light and fast shoe and actually something that's a racer oriented model that I really liked, but let's see how it's gonna work in general. For the outsole of this shoe, as with shoes in the past, Adidas has once again used Continental Rubber, which we can see there, Continental. Now, it's based on the Continental Race King mountain bike tire, which is a really quite grippy tire, really high quality, very sticky. Uh, I have noted in the past with some other reviews, which you can check out by clicking this little button, I think right up here, that some of those shoes are the most sticky rubber that I've ever run in. And I really feel like that is the case with this shoe as well. The pure material traction, in other words, the way that this rubber treats the surfaces and just sticks to the surface, regardless of the lug system is bar none. Now the outsole of this guy is laid out in a series of chevrons, which we can see here around the perimeter. And then right down the middle are a bunch of triangles, kind of with the corners cut off of them. These two to four millimeter deep lugs are only interrupted, not by any particular flex grooves, but by these cutaways, these three, which we can see right here, these two white ones, and then this black one or gray one right down here in the heel. These are meant to shave a little bit of weight and keep this thing light. Now, once again, I really find myself extolling the virtues of continental rubber. This thing is really incredible. And on the rocky trails that are around here, particularly those flat angled rocks, which I've told you guys about before, are the ones where really the material stands out as opposed to a lug system. These do very well and also are really, really great as a scrambling shoe. Part of that is because the foam that they're gonna use, which I'm gonna talk about in the midsole in a few minutes, uh, is not that boost foam. This is pure EVA and it just offers a really nice edge and combined with these lugs and the rubber, gives it nice hold on some really angled material like I told you about a minute ago. Now for lugs that are not super deep, again, about two to four millimeters deep, they're two kind of here in the middle, a little bit deeper over on the sides, the perimeter of the shoe. This has really great traction and you can really feel it hold very well. It's not, as traction oriented as a more luggy shoe, that is certain, but this really appeals to the racer-esque feel of this shoe. As for durability, both Lori and I have been reviewing this shoe and both of us found it really holds it very well. I've got about 45 miles on this, including a very challenging trek up the La Luce Trail in Albuquerque, uh, and it held up extremely well. I mean, you've got a little bit of scuffing, a little bit of wear on some of the rubber, but generally speaking, everything is in place apart from the normal wear and tear that you would expect to see. As we move into the midsole of the shoe, one of the words that really comes to mind is simplicity. This is a shoe that doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles. They use high quality materials and a well laid out design. And the outsole is kind of evidence of that. You don't see a whole ton going on here. You just see really good rubber, a nice lug layout, but the midsole is also like this. Made from simple lightweight EVA in the midsole here, the Terex Graphic Speed has no rock plate in place. It's simply that EVA foam covered by the outsole material that we can see here. Hidden in the midfoot, right about this area right here, is the Adidas torsion bar. We've seen this in tons of shoes from Adidas over the years. What this is meant to do is to keep the shoe as a cohesive unit while still allowing the rear foot and the forefoot to operate independently and still give you some torsional control over the shoe, which is great. And something that you, you really don't notice until it's not there. When you're on that off-camber terrain is where it really shines. I will get into this more in the ride section in just a second, but let me just remind you guys that this is a racer. At least that's what I and a lot of other people think. As such, they've chosen to opt without that rock plate, as I told you a second ago, because light and fast is the name of the game of the shoe. So if you're looking for a daily driver where you want a rock plate, something to really hold up over those technical miles, for some people, this might be it. I took this on some pretty technical trails. As I've said, I'm gonna get into that more in the ride section, but for some people that are looking for more protection, you may have a hard time finding it because while the outsole and the midsole do somewhat of a job of that, it's not as much as an embedded rock plate. Ground feel in this guy is excellent. In fact, there's some of you that might even find it a little bit harsh. Again, I think those are the people that are gonna be looking for that more midfoot protection with the rock plate and all that kind of stuff. This is a really, really very close to the ground shoe with 25 millimeters in the heel, 17 millimeters in the forefoot with a net drop of eight millimeters. And I believe that includes 
includes the stack of the lugs that are placed in there. This is a light and fast shoe and that's what it's meant to do. It's not meant to be your protective go for miles and miles and miles unless you're okay with that. Moving from the midsole into the upper, the upper of the Terex Graphic Speed sports a few materials to get its booty-esque construction down. The forefoot right here around front of kind of the metatarsal heads on the side and then over the vamp right here is made from a very breathable mesh. In fact, this is how I test the breathability of mesh apart from just running in it. Put your mouth on it, blow into it, and you can feel, in fact, how much airflow there is through there. And if you try that with different shoes, you will begin to get a sense of what is breathable versus not very breathable. Moving into the midfoot, this part right here, this is a, it's actually kind of a contradiction in terms. It's lightweight, but it's still a very burly ripstop material. I mean, you could pull on that thing, it, it's no joke. It's not like a jacket ripstop. Right here and here on the both the medial and lateral side of the midfoot is a very hardcore ripstop material, keeping things together in that area. As we move into the rear foot, we can see that this is more mesh. I'll hold it up to the camera here. It's not gonna do you guys very good, but you can see that's that booty-like construction that starts here at the junction of the vamp. This is the vamp right here, right at the bottom of the tongue there. That junction turns into like a booty-like construction right here, which is a perforated EVA. So there's some holes in that EVA foam right there, and then goes up into this general booty construction around the collar. The remainder of that EVA foam that's in there as well as around the back and the heel counter is this kind of faux suede application back here in a fairly flexible but still with some rigidity toward the bottom a nicely shaped heel counter. Internally the upper of the Terex Agarvik Speed is a little bit of a contradiction for me in that you've got this seamless look sort of thing going on with the booty construction and all that kind of stuff. But then as we move actually to the actual inside of the foot there are seams there. Now they're very comfortable they're all locked down and again this is a trail shoe most people run in some sort of a sock with a trail shoe there are in fact seams in this but they're comfortable and I did I think a mile or two here and there with this sockless again I don't really run sockless and it was perfectly comfortable so if that is your thing I think you should be okay with this now that booty-esque material that I told you about a second ago this stuff right here internally that's part of where you've got this seamless thing there are a few stitches on it which aren't really a seam because it's not a junction of fabric necessarily. It's just kind of where you're locking one fabric from the outside to the inside fabric. This is why I call this like a booty-esque fit because it's not technically really a booty. It only stand, extends up to right about here, right where we see the ripstop end. And internally, right about halfway down, that's where you're gonna really feel the junction between this ripstop material and this uh, perforated EVA foam covered mesh stuff that's going on right here. This is one of those places where these materials are meant to design and work together to really kind of reinforce one another and not compromise the construction or comfort, which is important. The durability of this guy for me has been outstanding. I mean, I have had this in some really just gnarly stuff and getting, you know, the, the upper kind of getting hit with sticks and rocks and what have you and coming up under a rock. I mean, some really awful stuff. And I know it's only got 45 miles, but there's nothing to see on it. There are no picks, there are no straight threads, nothing really on this fabric at all. It is held up very, very well. Now, as we move around to the heel counter, as I mentioned a second ago, there is a little bit of flexibility. And because there's not a lot of foam back there, it's just this, the same thing as the tongue, this perforated EVA covered in mesh that kind of comes around back here. Some people that have more low volume or narrow heels may find a little bit of heel lift as they're kind of coming into the, the push off phase of the gate there. But for me, there's this additional piece of foam right back here, kind of padding under that uh, mesh. That really held things in place nicely. Now, I also don't have a low volume foot, but this held place, things in place really nicely and the laces are tightened down enough that it just doesn't have a lot of slippage for me, but you may find differently. Rounding out the upper, we do have the ghillie style lacing system, which we see here, which enhance that booty-like fit and feel because it pulls the whole thing together. As you can see, these come right out of that ripstop material on the sides there. And then we've got this really well-adapted toe cap right down here, which is fantastic. It's like, it's a TPU overlay. It's really small, but it's quite beefy. I mean, you can hear that. That thing is no joke. And I, in fact, as you can see by the scuff marks on there, have kicked way more than my fair share of things in this shoe. As we move into the fit section of this review, I wanna ask a question of you guys before I start talking about my impressions of the fit. When you think of Adidas or Adidas running shoes, what do you think of the fit? Does it come to mind you're like, oh, that's such a roomy fit? 
Probably not, and this shoe is no exception. Now, to be fair, this is a more racer fit and feel, and as with many shoes that are racers, you're going to have that closer to the foot feel so that it responds more, it adds to the experience of the ride, the agility of the ride, and things like that. This is something that a lot of people look for in road racing shoes and in trail racing shoes, but then there's the fact that Adidas just happens to be a more Euro-like fit. It's got that more narrow fit and feel. And while I found this to fit true to size, it certainly is something more narrow than what I would usually wear a lot of the time. And Lori felt this too. Now I do not have a wide foot, nor do I have a narrow foot. I have a very average foot. And in this, I didn't have any fit issues per se. However, it is something that I'm aware that it is more narrow. So if you've got a wide foot, unless you can magically find a wide version of this, which I'm pretty sure doesn't exist, this probably isn't gonna be a shoe that'll fit you. However, if you're looking for something that's got that more aggressive racer-like feel, this would be fine for a very average or below foot. Now the heel and the midfoot of this shoe, as I've talked about in a lot of shoes, especially some of my favorite fitting shoes, Topo Athletic, it fits nicely through here. I mean, it's got that very kind of snug to the foot in the heel, snug to the foot in the midfoot right here. That's fine, that's great in fact, for a lot of really kind of cohesive feeling between the shoe and the foot. It's when we get into the toe box and the forefoot of this thing that it becomes a little bit more snug. Across the metatarsal heads, you can see that it's, it's reasonable. I mean, for me, it was right on my metatarsal heads. I didn't feel like I needed more room, but if I had any less, it would be a problem. Then into the toe box here, obviously, it's kind of capped off. I mean, it's a little bit square looking up here. It would just be nice to have a little bit more room in the toe of this, and it would make it accessible to an entirely new field of runners. And again, as I said a second ago, I did not have any problems with sizing this. My size 11s are exactly where I found myself comfortable. Now, as we start to talk about the ride, and you've gotten this far, you've definitely heard me say racer, like 50 times so far. And this is where we're gonna address that a little bit more. The first thing up is that ground feel that I touched on up in the midsole section. This is a very sensitive shoe. You're going to feel everything that's under your foot. It's not going to be, I don't know, harsh. I didn't find it harsh. But if you're somebody who usually runs in a maximalist shoe, like the Skechers Go Run Trail 4 or Go Trail Ultra 4, or the, uh, the Hoka shoe, Hoka Speed Goat or something like that, you're gonna be lacking. You're gonna not want to necessarily see as much ground feel as you might see in this. So it might be a bit of a transition there if you still wanna go with this shoe. For me, I found that on rocky material, even small rocks where you would think that that would be more affecting the overall ride of the shoe, I was aware of it, but I think the outsole material and the midsole material combined without the rock plate even, it really didn't bother me that much. But it is something that's on that borderline, kinda of like the fit. If it went one notch down, it would be a little bit too harsh for me on some of those more technical trails. This isn't something that should be a deal breaker for you, nor is it something that should prevent you from trying this on. It's just something to be aware of that if you have a more sensitive foot or more sensitive to ground feel in a negative way, I like a lot of ground feel, then this may be something that you might find have to find a compromise with. Now, once this shoe gets on more flowy, groomed single track stuff, that is where this just comes alive. It really and truly feels like a racer. I mean, I felt like I wanted to do a trail 5K or something, and I hate 5Ks because this is just a race-oriented shoe. It likes to go around corners. It likes to jump over bigger rocks and things like that. This is a great shoe for that sort of thing. So if you're looking for a 10K, 5K, something not necessarily on a fire road, that groom single track, this is really dialed for that. In my men's size 11, this comes in at 9.7 ounces, which isn't the lightest thing out there, but for a well-built trail shoe, it's really, really a nice fit. And it just stayed on the foot very well, felt nice. Uh, again, around those corners, I didn't feel any heel lift or anything like that because it just fits so well, very close to the foot and a lot of really intense ground feel, which you want on those groomed single tracks, especially to take more just kind of agility needing turns. Again, with regard to ride, I feel like this is a shoe that is dialed to that groomed single track, non-technical stuff for most people. This is a racing shoe. And while it can certainly, and I certainly took it on some more technical trails, I think you're just gonna be more at home on more groomers. Apart from the Euro fit of Adidas shoes and the specter of Yeezy looming over the brand's perception. One of the other hallmarks of Adidas running shoes is their high prices. However, the Terexographic Speed that we're looking at today actually kind of bucks that trend and comes in at a pretty decent price with a price tag of $120. In fact, 
If you check those links down below in the description of this video, or if you're on Gearist.com, you check the links down below the video itself, then you will see probably, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, some lower prices on this. Now, I'm certain that if this had boost foam in it, we would certainly see a price tag that's a little bit higher, but in this case, it's a really solid shoe for a really good price for Adidas. While I do think that this is a shoe that won't necessarily have the broad appeal for some people as a daily driver shoe, as I mentioned a second ago, if you're looking for a racer or a fast day, a speed shoe for the trail, this is certainly something that is well worth looking at. Guys, before we get to our question of the day, I want to ask you to share and subscribe this video. Like this video, favorite this video, tell everybody about Gearus. We really want to get the word out there. We want to grow our channel. We've got our Patreon page coming up very soon. In fact, if you're checking this now, you should already be able to check out Gearus.com slash Patreon. If it's not there, please check back. Also, those buy links that you see down in the description, all that stuff, those are awesome. They really help us out a lot. Take you right to Amazon, to Zappos, wherever. What those things do is they help to support Gearist without charging you guys another dime. You go buy a pair of shoes for 50 bucks on Amazon, we get a little kickback from that, and it's a huge, huge help toward forwarding what we want to do here at Gearist. Now, my question of the day for you guys is, do you have a trail racer, or do you just have kind of your general trail shoe that you might take on a race? What is your answer? We'd love to hear it down in the comments section below. Guys, if you've got any questions about this or any of our other videos, we love your comments. Please leave those down in the comments section. Let us know what's up. Or email info at gearist.com or reach out to us on social. Pretty much everything slash gearist except for Twitter, which is twitter.com slash the gearist because some 12 year old in Malaysia or something has gearist. Let us know what's up. Let us know if you have any questions. We love hearing from you. Tag us, I'm a gearist, and Instagram, hashtag I'm a gearist. We want to see your photos. Also, go buy a hat. Go to facebook.com slash gearist. We've got the shop right there. You can just buy a hat. Helps support us once again. Helps us be able to make more swag to get to you guys very soon. Thank you guys so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time.